Hey everyone, Mr. Newman here, and in this video we're going to learn about transformations on exponential functions. Now, first thing I want to do is I want to show you guys the, about the notation. When we write f of x equals y or f of x equals something, really that x is our input. It's inside the parentheses. It represents x, and since x is horizontal, the input is going to affect things in the horizontal directions. Likewise, your output is what's on the outside of the parentheses. That is your y value, and since y is vertical, up and down, it's going to affect things in the vertical direction. So remember that at the outset of this entire video, and that will make remembering a lot of these things much, much easier. Another thing I need to tell you guys about are parent functions. The parent function is your starting function, where, where you begin. We're starting with our parent function right here in the middle. You notice I've graphed the parent function on each of these around the outside, and I just wanted to show you guys that in the middle, that's what we're starting with, and we'll transform that. In other words, we'll move it, shift it, stretch it in different ways. Now, let's uh, talk about that. A transformation is a, chain, a specific change to a function. In other words, it's a shift or a slide. That's all these things we're doing. They're all transformations. Don't get transformation confused with translation. A translation is where you slide the function. You move it left or right or up or down. But the overall shape is un unchanged. Compared to a dilation or a stretch, that's where you stretch or shrink a function, and that will actually change the shape of it. All right. So on the front here, we're actually going to do all the different transformations. It's nice because you have up, down, left, and right, so we'll talk about translating up, and that is sliding the function up. The mathematical way you write that is you write f of x plus something, where that plus something is on the outside of the parentheses. The reason it's on the outside is because the output, remember, is your y, and that is vertical. So if you want to move it up, that's vertical, so we need to add to the outside. An example of that would be if I said f of x plus 2. And I'm going to show you how to graph that. What you want to do is you want to pick points on the function, like that point right there is 0, 1, and you want to move each point up 2, like that. Let's pick another point, and we're going to move it up 2. Pick another point, move it up 2. Pick another point, move it up 2. And once you move enough points up, you can connect the dots and see the new function. See how that child function or the new function is moved up to from the parent function. We call that translating up, and that is done by adding to the outside of the function notation. To translate, oh, yep, you see how each one is moved up. To translate down, what you want to do is you want to write f of x minus something. Up is plus, minus down, that makes sense. And on the outside, again, is the output, so that's going to move it on the, uh, vertically, so that's down. An example of that would be if we had f of x minus 3, and then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to pick a point, and I'm going to plot that point three spaces or three units down. Pick another point, move it three down. Pick another point, move it three down. And again, once you have enough of those points, you can see the function and you can connect it. The more points you do, the more accurate you'll be. And... That is how you translate down. Now, translating left and right is a little bit different because we are moving horizontally. There are two important things that are different. The first is that it involves the input. So you're going to see some like see how the x plus the uh, the number is inside the parentheses. The other thing that's different is unlike uh, vertical transformations where adding moves up, that makes sense. Subtracting moves down, that makes sense. When you add here, you're moving left instead. So f of x plus 2 moves the function left 2. We're going to move it the same way. We're going to pick a point and move it left 2. Pick a point, move it left 2. Pick a point, move it left 2. And so you want to do enough points that you can connect the dots and you see how that moves the function left 2. Likewise, translating right does the opposite of what you expect, and so it's again going to be on the input because it's a horizontal transformation. So that's our x value. That's inside the parentheses. But we're going to do x minus something to move it right. So, for example, f of x minus 3. 
take this point, move it right three. Pick another point, move it right three. And you can pick any point on the graph. I'm just picking the central five points each time we do this, if you notice. Connect the dots and you have your function translated right three. So, how do we remember these things? Well, remember that output is your y value and that is vertical. So if whatever number, if you're adding or subtracting on the outside of the parentheses, that's the output, that's going to be your y value. And you know that the y axis is up and down, is vertical. So that's going to move things up. Adding is going to move it up, subtracting is going to move it down. Nice. Output. The input, though, is x. So that's going to be horizontal, left or right. And the one thing you have to remember when you add or subtract to the inside of the parentheses, that's the input, you have to remember that the input does the opposite of what you expect. Output does what you expect, but the input does the opposite of what you expect. So let's use this and try a few practice problems over here. First off, f of x plus 3, that's the output. So that means it's going to be vertical, either up or down. I remember output does what I expect, so translate three units up is the answer. For number two, that is also on the outside of the parentheses, so that is the output. And translate five units down because the output does what we expect. For the next one, that is the input, so we need to remember input does the opposite of what you expect. I would expect it minus two to move left two, but because it's input, instead of moving left to, it's going to translate right to. It's the opposite of what I expect. It, notice it's not the opposite in that inputs are always horizontal. That is always true. Likewise, number four, input is horizontal again. So I'd expect it to move right, but since it's an input, it should be moving left instead. So we have translate for left. On the back of your paper here, we have the dilations. So we shifted it around on the front, moved it up, down, left, right. Now we're going to stretch it and shrink it. So for the first one, this is a vertical stretch. This is where you multiply on the outside of the function. Notice two things. We're multiplying now. That's what gives it the stretching nature. And it's on the outside, so we know it's going to be vertical because it's an output, and that's the y. Now, this number you're multiplying by needs to be bigger than 1. Otherwise, it's like you're multiplying by, uh, when you multiply by a number smaller than 1, that's kind of like dividing. And that's going to be the next thing we see here in a second. So when you're multiplying by a number bigger than 1, for example, if we did 3 times f of x, the way you graph this is you plot, pick each point and you multiply that y value by 3. So you see that y value is 1. I'm going to move it and it becomes 3. The next y value is 2. I'm going to move that. I'm going to multiply that 2 by 3. And so I, it becomes 1, 6. Notice the x values for those points do not change, only the y values. Likewise, when the point is 2, it goes way up off the top of the graph. Or x, uh, 2, 4 would go to 2, 12. The point negative 1, 0.5 will move to negative 1, 1.5. So I'm multiplying each of these y values by 3, and I connect the dots, and you notice I have a stretched out, vertically stretched out function. It's like somebody grabbed the function and pulled it up away from the x-axis. For the vertical shrink, this is where we have our function. It's on the output again, but it's being divided by a number this time. It, you could also instead multiply by a number between 0 and 1, but I like to think of it as dividing. And what that means is we're going to take each of these y values. For example, if we had f of x divided by 2, we're going to take each of the y values, the outputs, and we're going to divide them by 2. So the point 0, 1, that 1 gets divided by 2, the y value, and we get 0, 0.5. 1, 2, you divide the y value by 2, and you get... 1 comma 1. 2 comma 4 divide the y by value by 2 and you get 2 comma 2. And when we connect those dots we get a function that seems like it's been shrunk down vertically. It's almost like someone stepped on and squished it. 
So that's vertical stretches and shrinks. Now we move on to horizontal stretches and shrinks. But the key here is to remember that horizontal, remember inputs always do the opposite of what you expect. So we, would know, we know it's inside the parentheses because it's horizontal. But if we had f of x divided by 3, where the x divided by 3 is inside the function, what that's going to do is instead that's going to stretch it out. Even though we think dividing by 3 would shrink it, because it's an input, it does the opposite of what you expect, so it's going to stretch it. So let's stretch each of these functions horizontally. Well, the point 1, 2, oops, that point is going to go to 1, 3, because we multiplied the x value by 3. This point, 2, 4, multiplied the x value by 3, that's going to become 6, 4. The funny thing about 0, 1, when you multiply 0 by 3, you get 0 again. So that's going to stay where it is. And the other points move out as such. Negative 1 goes to negative 3. Whoops. And negative 2 will move to negative 6. So here we go. I need to sketch a better graph of this. And you see it looks like someone grabbed the left and right side of this function and stretched it out horizontally, pulled it apart away from the y-axis. So the key here to remember is the input does the opposite of what you expect. Even though we're dividing, you think it would shrink it. Because it's an input, it's going to stretch it instead. For this other one, we have a horizontal shrink. And what we're going to do is we're going to see that Shrinking, the way you shrink a function horizontally, is to multiply by a number bigger than 1 on the input. For example, f of 2x, 2 times x. For this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take each x value and I'm going to divide it by 2. So we get to the point, for example, 1, 2 becomes a half, 2. 2, 4 becomes 1, 4. 0 stays where it is. Negative 1, 1 becomes negative a half, 1. And negative 2, comma, a quarter becomes negative 1, comma, a quarter. And when we connect those dots, you notice what happened. It's like someone squished from the left and the right side the function in towards the x-axis. So everything is pushed in. Now, how do we remember this? And, or, no, sorry. We know how we remember what happens. Suppose you already know what happens. I'm wondering how do we graph it, okay? Um, if we have a horizontal stretch by 2, say we already know it's going to be a horizontal stretch by 2 because we know it's f of x divided by 2. Well, if you know it's a horizontal stretch, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to... So if we have a horizontal stretch by 2, then what's going to happen is we want to multiply the x value of each point by 2. If we know ahead of time there's a horizontal shrink by 3, then we're going to take each point's x value and divide it by 3. And if you have to write out the numbers for each of these, like 2, 5, and 3, 8, and do the math for each point, that is perfectly fine. In fact, I would encourage it to be more accurate, more precise. If you know ahead of time there's a vertical stretch by 4, then you multiply each point's y value by 4. And if there's going to be a vertical stretch by 5, for, shrink by 5, for example, then you're going to divide each point's y value by 5. All right, let's try these practice examples using what we know now. And I just want you to name each transformation. The first one we know is an output because the 2 is on the outside. So we know it's going to be vertical because outputs are y values. Vertical stretch by 2. In other words, you're going to take each y value and multiply it by 2. For the next one, f of x is divided by 5. Since that's on the output, we know it's going to be a vertical transformation and it's going to be a vertical shrink because we're dividing by 5. So you're going to take each y value and divide that by 5. The next one is an input and here's what you need to remember. The input does the opposite of what you expect. So we know it's horizontal because it's input but is it going to be a stretch or a shrink? Well it looks like it should be a stretch but because you're doing the input it's going to do the opposite, so it's actually a shrink, horizontal shrink, 
by a factor of 3. So you're going to take each x value and divide it by 3. And then for this one, we know it's an input again, so the input does the opposite of what you expect. You think dividing would shrink something, but because it's input, it's going to be stretching it. So we know it's an input, that makes it horizontal, and it's going to be a horizontal stretch by a factor of 4. There are two more kinds of things we need to talk about. That is a horizontal flip and a vertical flip. For a horizontal flip, again, we can follow the rule of horizontal is x value, so that's going to be input. So we want to write our flip inside the parentheses. Well, if it's a flip, if we're flipping all of the things, that's going to be the opposite, so we're going to write it like this, f of negative x. f of negative x is going to flip it horizontally, and the way you do that is you take each point and you plot its mirror over the uh, y-axis. You flip it horizontally. So positive 1 becomes negative 1. Positive 2 becomes negative 2. Only for the x values, because it's a horizontal flip. Positive 1 becomes negative 1, po and 0 is still 0, because the opposite of 0, negative 0 is 0. And you plot all those points, and when you connect the dots, you see that is a horizontal flip. In other words, it's a reflection over the y-axis. For a vertical flip, on the other hand, we know vertical is the output, so that's the y value, and we're going to want to put our negative on the output, on the outside, so negative f of x. What that looks like is you're going to take each point and plot its flip over the x-axis, a vertical flip. That means each y value, if you have positive 1, becomes negative 1. Positive 2 becomes negative 2. Positive 4 becomes negative 4. And when you do that for each point, connect the dots, and you get the exponential function was flipped vertically. Thank you very much for watching.